jokes, Patrick? You've been working on your Type 5? I have not been working on my Type 5, but how about that weather, Brian? It's <laughs> typical. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I hope we have more to say about uh, sustainable flooring than we do the weather, right? Yeah. Hey, Patrick, <laughs> do you know what you call a fish that's missing an eye? Mm, what do you call it, Brian? Fish. Ooh. Uh, huh? Three out of ten, maybe. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> hey, Patrick, you know it's long, brown, and sticky? What, Brian? A stick. <laughs> That one's better. That one's better. Yeah, let's, right. let's stick to that one. <laughs> stick. Yeah. yeah. Okay, everybody. Those are my two jokes. Um, you guys are killing me. We'll we'll leave it to the professional <laughs> hosts now. <laughs> stick to what we know. <laughs> well, I'm still waiting on my. I'm here. Are you starting the screen? Oh, she just got here, Diane. Yes. Okay. Well, it's noon o'clock. Noon o'clock. Shoot. Boy, it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> and we're hi. ready to... Diane, hi. Sorry, my thing just going... Oh. oh, boy. <laughs> oh, I love well, it. Difficulties this morning, right? I love it. Um, Diane, you look fabulous. Oh gosh. Diane you. and Patrick are here and I think we're ready to start rolling. Um, Welcome. And, <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to launch our poll for the next presentation and while we do our introductions. So everyone in the audience can just go ahead and um, take a look at the poll and start casting your votes. So today is our second day of the product showcase and yesterday went wonderfully. We're really excited about this format and we're really excited about our presenters. And here's a brief snapshot of what we have coming up today. So I am Hannah Tiffany. I'm VP of IDS Seattle and representing um, IDS today. And my co-host is Diane Troutman, who is currently the programs chair of the NKBA Puget Sound. So she's representing NKBA. And this is the first year that we've collaborated. And thanks to Corona, this is the first year we're doing it virtually. And um, you know what? There's silver lining to everything. And we're really excited about this. So just a little housekeeping, um, as you know, uh, use the chat box, use the Q&A, use the poll, um, and interact with us. We want this to be fun, interactive, and fast moving and educational. So I'm gonna get us rolling today. Our first presenter kicking off um, this event is, um, oh, excuse me, I have something right in the middle of my screen, Olympic Construction Services. So Brian and Patrick, say hi. Hello. Hey, everybody. I'm Brian. And I'm Patrick. <laughs> Exciting to have you here. Um, so uh, they are going to be presenting on sustainable European flooring in the Pacific Northwest. So that presentation is going to raise concerns about environmental impact of a lot of the popular flooring materials that we're using today, in particular LVT. Um, there are others um, other than LVT, broadloom and nylon carpets. And so we're gonna to learn today about why these products are harmful to the environment. And then they're gonna showcase options from Europe that are more sustainable, um, especially during the production process because of the lifespan. So plastic based flooring options, are, of course, are gaining a lot of popularity because of their price point, the ease of use. Uh, but despite all of those advantages, they can cause serious harm to the environment. So we're going to leave this presentation with some selling tools to help our clients understand the impact of what we're putting in their homes. Uh, Brian Bice is veteran of the flooring installation business. He co-founded Olympic Construction Services to bring sustainable and innovative flooring products to the Pacific Northwest. And then before I hand it off to them, just a little Look ahead, we're going to be raffling off a couple bottles of wine from Delil at the end of this presentation. All right, so I'm going to hand it off to you and I'm going to end our polling and I'm going to share our results. So you all can see this, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wonderful. It's okay. good to see. Good to see, yes. That's a really great response. Um, about 30, third, like one third, one third, one third for sometimes, often, always. Um, it's a great way to start this out. All right, take it away. 
Okay. Uh, well, thank you so much for that introduction, Hannah. I think you really kind of encapsulated what we're going to be trying to do in our presentation today, which is think a little bit more about the materials we use in our flooring products. And I do hate to start the day filling your head with visions of landfills and toxic chemicals and everything like that. But as Hannah mentioned, if you stick around to the end, we will be raffling off some wine. One of the bottles just won wine of the year in Seattle Times. So stick with us, please. And we'll show you some great flooring options. But to start off with, yeah, just a little bit more about our company. We're a new flooring firm here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, but we come from a really strong technical background. Uh, Brian and our other founder, Mark, have decades of experience installing floors in commercial and residential settings all across the Seattle area and throughout the Pacific Northwest. And we really wanted to bring that kind of technical background, that installer's perspective, and then also to partner with some innovative companies and bring products that really weren't available in the market here. And so we've done that by making a few really good partners. One of them is Relative Space in Toronto. And those guys uh, have been around for decades and they've partnered with lots of European manufacturers uh, to bring in carpets, resilient flooring, hardwood flooring uh, that is responsible in the supply chain, uh, stylish, hits a lot of different price points and a really unique product. So we're happy to carry those products. And if we go for it, I'll explain a little bit more why uh, so sustainability and flooring is something that I think is talked about, but with the growth of products like luxury vinyl tile, uh, something that we need to take another step back and really examine. And so thinking about these options that are cheap, um, you know, affordable to put in, pretty cheap by the square foot, uh, but look pretty good. And vinyl technology has come a long ways and has some advantages about being easy to clean, has some good durability. Uh, but I was thinking about it and I like to kind of compare it to the fast fashion industry. Uh, so, you know, fast fashion is brands like Forever 21 or Zara or H&M that kind of mimic or try and copy the look of high-end design fashion, uh, but are made with cheap materials and are kind of only made to be worn a few times and then thrown out. And while this obviously has a lot of advantages in making stylish looking clothing available to everybody, uh, it kind of had an unintentional ecological response as well as the amount of uh, textile waste entering the landfills each year has really ballooned and uh, the fashion industry now is the second biggest water polluter after agriculture because of all the dyes being used. And there's kind of a lot of parallels between this fast fashion ecological crisis and what's happening with the um, vinyl plastic flooring and with um, carpet as well. So some statistics about vinyl flooring would be that there's about 14 billion tons or 14 billion pounds that are uh, produced in the United States each year, enough to cover 250 square miles, which is about the entirety of Chicago. And this is kind of concerning when you keep in mind vinyl's life cycle. Uh, vinyl is usually about 10 to 20 year warranties by the manufacturer, but in reality, a lot of people are kind of putting it in and only keeping it for a few years before they're able to rip it out, put in whatever's the new trend, the new style, the best uh, kind of colors and patterns, uh, just because it is so cheap, often less than a dollar a square foot at places like Lumber Liquidators. And there's lots of, lots of um, bad chemicals that go into the manufacture of vinyl, such as chlorine, lots of petroleum is being used to make this. And then it's when it is removed, it sits in the life, uh, it sits in the garbage dump for uh, just an entirety. Like it will not biodegrade at all. Very little of it is recycled. And similarly, uh, carpets uh, that are uh, broadloom carpets, they can enter the solid waste stream of the United States, making up 2% of total waste each year. And carpet products, depending on how they're made, uh, often contain lots of hazardous toxic substances that also enter the landfill. And so, yeah, on this slide right here, we kind of have a breakdown of potentially hazardous toxic substances in carpet. Now, I'm not saying that all of these are in carpets on the market today. A lot of the manufacturers have gone to great lengths to kind of remove things like uh, PVC from carpet or try to be a little bit more, uh, you know, conscientious about the adhesives that are used 
Uh, but the, you know, we're kind of trying to get you with this slide to think about when you're specifying a product like carpet or specifying any, you know, any flooring material or any, anything really, uh, just kind of ask the manufacturer how it's made, what materials go in there, is it going to be um, like with the best practice in the industry, uh, because there are, you know, carpet has been linked to certain health impacts uh, due to, you know, phthalates and plasticizers that are found in it or adhesives like formaldehyde. Uh, and this could be particularly, um, you know, something to keep in mind with carpet that comes from outside of the United States and can't have the guarantee of uh, internal manufacturing. And so we'll talk about one of the alternatives that we carry and uh, kind of in relation to both how it's made and its life cycle. All right. Um, so we'll talk a little bit here about a line called Carpet Concept that's based out of Germany. Um, they've been in business since, um, sorry, I've just, Lost my notes here. They were founded in 1993 in Baselford, Germany. Um, the factory is in uh, southwest of Leipzig. Everything they manufacture is PVC and bitumen free, which is super important. Um, we've got a few different lines of tufted and woven carpets. Um, the tufted carpets are all manufactured out of eco nil which is an endlessly recyclable uh, nylon that is uh, originally sourced typically from things like discarded fishing nets that are harvested from the oceans. Um, we kind of highlight the two different lines here with Carpet Concept with the um, slow tufted and the eco, which is their woven lines. Um, and kind of the, the, the difference here is um, the tufted is going to be relatively inexpensive. It goes together really nicely. Um, it comes out of pretty quick production time. Um, and it's conducive to printing. So the, the tufted lines from Carpet Concept are um, printed with a Militron printing machine, which is similar to uh, some other lines that you may be familiar with, like Milliken um, and Bentley. Um, the, kind of the downsides to a tufted carpet is it's a little bit less dense, which uh, impacts long-term durability. Um, it relies a little more on chemicals and adhesives to produce. So there's when they when they bind the tufts to the backing, there's a lot more adhesives used in there, which causes it to be heavy, heavier and carry a little more embodied in, energy. Uh, the eco line of carpet is uh, woven carpets, uh, which is a warp and a weft, uh, just, just like any other woven material. These carpets are uh, significantly more durable. Uh, they use a lot less adhesive in the manufacturing process. They'll never, they won't unravel. Um, they don't, they uh, don't, they aren't as heavy for shipping and for installation purposes. And, and as such, because of all these things, it's a lot more sustainable. These carpets just wear like iron. Uh, you put down a woven carpet, it, it will last and last. Uh, it doesn't trap dirt the same way a tufted carpet will. It doesn't trap allergens, um, danders, all the, all the airborne indoor air, uh, air quality is, is much better uh, with this versus a classic tufted carpet. Kind of the downsides of the wovens are, um, they're going to be more expensive. Um, and they're a little trickier to install, and it's kind of a specialty product. So the um, production isn't as quick. Uh, it takes a little more time as as the the weaving process does. And and I have a, I have actually a couple of samples here, um, so we can kind of show nice. a little bit of the texture of these woven goods. Um, just now, super, Brian, super high, high quality products. Um, Brian, did you say where in the world these are um, manufactured? I, everything comes from Germany. It's all manufactured in a, in a mill just south of Leipzig. I love um, it. And, you know, as such, you know, these products all carry our 
um, all, all the environmental certifications, the CRI, Green Label Plus, um, they're manufactured under German environmental standards, which are extremely tight these days. Um, you know, mm -hmm. they can't even, they can't manufacture epoxy in Germany anymore because of the, the VOCs that are emitted in that process. So um, when we have anything coming out of Germany that's manufactured in Germany, we're really, really comfortable with the supply chain and, and the materials used. Um, and it's just really a great company. They also offer um, a number of different backings for the carpets for acoustic purposes, as well as full line of wall acoustics. Uh, indoor paneling, um, quiet rooms, office partitions, et cetera, et cetera. Love it. And now um, I assume that, can you tell us about the, the two lines? Um, residential is a lifetime warranty? Residential is, I believe, on, on the woven goods, a lifetime warranty. I'd have to double check on that. I'll, I'll, I'll research that while Patrick's handling these next products and, and um, yeah, get that into the chat. Yeah, so next we're going to be going into engineered wood flooring. Uh, and for, I'd just like to take a second and step back to talk about the lifespan and I guess what goes into the product. And so especially with wood, it has an advantage because uh, the raw materials used for it unlike, for example, petroleum and chlorine in vinyl flooring, uh, it actually sequesters CO2 before, uh, before the wood is even milled. Is it, can you hear the, uh, sorry. Uh, and um, it is, uh, this kind of like helps to talk about the sequestering and the wood impact or uh, the carbon impact of the product. Uh, and then at the end of life cycle, it can either be recycled or made into another wood uh, product, reclaimed wood, which is obviously going to be the best and have the lowest carbon impact, or it can uh, be biodecomposed eventually and enter the life, exit the life stream. That's very cool. I always like that the um, end of life is taken into the life cycle of the product. And I think that's important for us to remember, especially when we're remodeling any space or building new, like when we remodel, what's happening to all the stuff we're tearing out? Um, and that's an important part of it too. So I'm, I'll move forward for you. This is excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we are going to uh, just talk about a couple of the engineered wood florins that we carry. Um, uh, and uh, it's uh, th these products, the first one is Flight and it's uh, manufactured once again in uh, Germany, in Austria. The design is by our partners at Relative Space in Toronto. And uh, both of these products are uh, meet quite a few of the uh, 2030 Carbon Smart Materials Palette benchmarks uh, that the uh, 2030 project uh, kind of suggests when specifying wood and is really important whenever you're talking about a wood product if you are aiming for uh, the least environmental impact. And that's to come from sustainably managed forests uh, because these forests are going to be uh, make sure that there's no excess deforestation, which adds extra carbon uh, to, the, to the process. Uh, and these particular are white oak from Europe. White oak tends to be one of the most sustainable trees because their forests are extremely easy to manage. There's quite a few uh, white oak coverage throughout Europe. Uh, so even though other species, you know, beautiful like hickory and walnut, uh, white oak tends to be the most sustainable. Um, and also with an engineered wood flooring, you get to use a fast growth forest for the core. So these products both use spruce trees in places like uh, the Czech Republic and Hungary and Poland. Uh, and that results in just less of these old growth uh, and longer growth spans of uh, oak trees to be used. Uh, so just a couple of key features of them. The first one, flight flooring is going to be a three-layer construction, which means there's oak on the top, and then there's the engineered layer made out of spruce in the middle, and oak on the bottom as well. And uh, this product is going to be all long boards, so these boards are all seven foot long, uh, available in a wide range of colors, and it's also uh, herringbone, which is really unique because this is a click-together flooring system 
Uh, this unique click together ability allows it to be floated without the use of any glue or, glue or nails, uh, which makes uh, the flooring is less apt to kind of expand and contract uh, and results in a really, uh, a much more stable floor. And, um, you know, it's able to be cleaned with 100% VOC free uh, chemical and, or uh, natural products. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's really quite stylish. Uh, the board lengths are they're pretty wide boards of uh, about, you know, about six inches uh, in width. Uh, it's got a three millimeter wear layer. So this floor can be re-sanded and finished multiple times in its lifespan, uh, which means that it's kind of comparable to uh, a solid wood floor in that it can be re-sanded and refinished a bunch, which only lengthens its lifespan. Uh, and, you know, we really intend for these floors to come in that, you know, come in for life. And we can get these floors to you in the Pacific Northwest area for a price range of about five to seven dollars a square foot, uh, which does kind of put it in the in the reach of a lot of people who would be using the service of an interior designer um, doesn't break the bank, which is also pretty great for the uh, for having a herringbone pattern. Hey, I got a couple of questions. Can I cut in for a sec? Sure. Do you mind? Okay, I think this has to do with the carpet, but it probably has to do with your other um, with the wood as well. Mm -hmm. Are you the distributor sales team only, or do you prefer to supply and install as well? Uh, we have a partner installation company that we can refer. Um, that company is uh, a union, uses 100% union labor. So a lot of times it might be a little expensive for a residential project, but they, they it's mostly geared towards larger commercial work. Um, we do have some trusted installers that we work with locally, um, but we're, we're happy to work with whoever your preferred installer is, or we can see um, what our partner company has on their availability to, to perform the work. Okay, great. Do you guys do, so you do both residential and commercial settings with these products? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, sorry, I have like four questions that came in all of a sudden. Um, sure. The flight hardwood flooring come in different cuts, rift, um, rift cut, quarter sawn, and plain. Did you already say that? <laughs> it's the, the flight is typically a uh, flat sawn and it's a like a very very clean grade mm -hmm. and it has a it has a matte finish on top so it kind of reflects doesn't really reflect light very much it shows the natural color of the wood um and it just shows less dirt oh that's great and is it do you have custom stain options with flight or is it just what they what they offer? I think it depends a lot on the it depends a lot on the quantity that we would be talking about. Um, we have a number of um, I think there's like 17 or 18 standard finishes mm -hmm. um, and I, I would have to double check with our vendor um, to find out where that number needs to be for a custom. Uh, with our sumo line that we're introducing next, that that is a lot more uh, flexible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, with seventeen stains, you know, you might be able to get most people in somewhere in there, right? Yeah, I think that it really they really have a, a beautiful um, collection of pre-finished colors. Um, and it, it's just, yeah, it, it's a really nice looking product, really clean and modern. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it uses a Bona finish, which is a Swedish company. Uh, re really nice stains, yeah. yeah. Uh, one last question, I'm gonna let you guys talk, sorry. Do you have a yeah, showroom? No, sorry? Do you have a showroom anywhere that we can all come look at the products? We do not have a showroom yet. We've been doing a couple of different things. We've been going, we can either go to your, um, wherever your design studio or house is, if you would like, or we've been doing kind of like trunk shows where we can meet somewhere and have products at the trunk. Uh, we are working on getting a showroom yeah. since we're about to get a ton of samples from our partners and we're going to need somewhere to put them all. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but those are the two, those are the two things that yeah. we've been doing with, with that, that have been working well for us so far during the quarantine. 
Yeah, and, and we're we're super flexible. If um, you know, our our goal is to serve you guys. Um, so whatever is is the best case for you, uh, we will work to meet that. Um, but I anticipate within the next probably three weeks, we will have a space where we can host people to come see what we have. Um, it's going to be a big chore to get figured out here soon. Hey, I'm going to, Diane, let's hold the questions to the end because we're, I just want to make sure we're getting through this yeah. time. Oh, and we've got a There's few so many more. great things to look at. I know this is awesome. And I love these questions that are coming in. Um, Thank but, you for letting me interrupt. <laughs> yep, all right, absolutely. Yeah, it's just fine with us. That shows interest. That's great. Um, I'm now and let you guys talk. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, the next, the next line uh, is the sumo line. Uh, this comes from the same mills in uh, Germany and Austria. And this line is really customizable. Uh, it uses a Rubio monocoat finish, so it has tons of different color options available. I think there's something like 200 something different uh, choices between all of the sizes, finishes. Uh, and stuff. And this one does have uh, options of choosing the finish, anything from rustic to really elegant, very, very kind of clean, modern, elegant looking wood. Uh, this is also uh, really specializes in long width uh, platforms and lengths as well. Uh, the lengths on these boards can go as pretty much as big as a shipping container. I think they max out at around 21 feet and uh, 21 feet long and 14 inches wide. But of course there's a lot more, um, you know, reasonable sizes that'll fit with a lot of different rooms. So this is a product that if your client has, wants a lot of custom, custom ability, uh, we have that for you. It's also available in flight and herringbone patterns. As well, uh, it's a, it has a chevron available uh, yeah, as well. Sorry, chev chevron and herringbone patterns, yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, the next line is going to be our modular one. And so we kind of started this presentation talking about, you know, luxury vinyl tile, which of course, uh, part of the reason it's so popular is because its price point really makes it a lot more accessible. Um, our engineered wood floors we were talking about, flight was around five to seven dollars a square foot. Sumo starts at around $9 a square foot. So not always applicable for a situation if you're looking to take vinyl out of the equation. Uh, that's where Modular One comes in. And this is a product that's gonna be under $4 a square foot all day between two and $4. And what it is, is it's kind of like a hybrid resilient wood flooring. Uh, it's completely softener and vinyl free, uh, plasticizer free as well. Um, the top layer is, uh, is a laminate layer. Um, that is made to either look like wood or stone. And this is not your laminate of old, really kind of cheap looking stuff. This is some pretty cutting edge uh, German technology here. It has the look, the feel of like a wire brushed wood. Um, and not only that, but it has a lot of the advantages that vinyl has as well. This is also a click together system that uh, and the tough finish, it makes it kind of water resistant. It beats four hour standing water test that makes this a floor that you can put in bathrooms, you can put in kitchens, you can put this in your basement, your romper room, kind of any one of those situations where a vinyl floor you kind of want because it can take a little bit more wear and tear and because it can take water, uh, this floor will absolutely be there for you. And it's great abrasion resistance as well, which is another quality people kind of uh, put up with or enjoy vinyl floor. And it comes in a variety of different sizes. It's got a wide plank format, a chateau plank format, and uh, even larger format than that. So yeah, the the planks are, the chateau plank is a, is about a nine and a quarter inch wide by seven foot long plank. Uh, really, really beautiful product. The, the wide plank is about six inches wide and approximately five and a half feet long. And then they have what they call a large tile format, which is um, about three feet by a uh, foot and a half. Uh, and those those come in sort of a, either a, a stone or ceramic tile look. Yeah, they've got um, a great one called Athens that kind of is a very nice Mediterranean look to it. Uh, yeah, really great. <laughs> The, um, they've got their own proprietary click and lock system, uh, which is kind of unique 
there's there's only basically three click and lock systems for uh, click together planks in the world. Um, uh, two of them are licensed by most manufacturers in Parador in their modular one and, and the rest of their laminate collections actually has their own that is um, far and away the strongest click together system on the market. It will, um, it, it forms tight enough that it won't allow water to seep in between the boards at all. Mm -hmm. And um, this, sorry, let me just interject really quickly. I also just want to say that this is all the floors we talked about today are uh, great for underfloor heating or not, uh, at least the wood floorings are. And so this is so great for underfloor heating if you want to do a heated floor in a bathroom uh, or in a living area or something like that. Yep. That is awesome. Yeah. I think we have a few more questions in the chat box. I shared your email addresses in the chat box because um, it's, there's some interest in getting something uh, set up to see product, like you mentioned, trunk shows. Um, mm -hmm. And we know that while you don't have a showroom right now, um, I noticed a question about how to get samples of product. Yes. Um, we absolutely get uh, or get samples. Most of them are stocked of the ones that we're showing today. They're in the Toronto with our partners of Relative Space. Or uh, we, we have a pallet of flight and sumo samples on the way from Toronto yes. right now. They just shipped it yesterday. So yes, we would love to share those samples and get them out of our houses and into your hands. <laughs> awesome. Diane, are, what, else is, what else have we got in the question box? So I don't, I think I interrupted and used all of them. <laughs> have anything right. to say? I know, it's like, sorry. Oh, well, we got it worked in. Well, we just want to close and say that uh, we would like to be able to share with any of the people here who are other product reps in, you know, kitchen, bathroom, uh, that if your clients have any questions about flooring, substrate specifically, Brian is great. If you have like substrate questions for spaces, anything like that, uh, yeah, just give us a shout too. We'd be happy to share the, the knowledge that we come in. We kind of hope to bring more than you know, that technical background and we want to share it with the community as well. And yeah, yeah, I, I think that one thing for us that that we really stand out is, is the level of service that we can offer and really prescribing a full flooring solution rather than, like I'm not a salesperson, that, that's not my trade is, my trade is a, as an installer and as somebody gets the project uh, complete. And, and we wanna provide something that's gonna perform exactly the way that is expected. Um, let's see here. She wants to awesome. know the layers for the modular one. Um, let's see if I can pull that up here real quick. So polypropylene is the top layer. And then the high density fiber is kind of the core layer. And then it has a uh, cork at the bottom that helps approve acoustic sounds actually. And there's additional acoustic uh, underlay if you want. And then yes, the click together system. All right. That, awesome. is that, is that correct, Brian? The, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> essentially correct. It, it, uh, the, the paper, the wood look is a um, inkjet printed paper with a polypropylene on top. So there's not any pattern repeat. You won't, you know, with an LVP, you might have six different boards in a box or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and you really, you know, for me, it sticks out like a sore thumb. I'm like, oh, there's that board again. There's that board again. There's that board again. So th these are printed on uh, big, wide sheets and they're printed sort of procedurally rather than to a pattern. So it really, and, and again, the, 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 polypropylene wear layer mimics the the texture of the grain underneath it, it really feels like a, a proper wood floor and it is you know for all intents and purposes it is a wood floor um, everything's you know for sustainability council certified um, it has an end of life it, you know when this thing comes out when these floors come out they can be chipped up and biodegraded they could be chipped up and make it made re remade into floors um, so Brian, that, 
Yeah, that is that is awesome. Thank you so much. I I'm sorry to cut you off here, but we got to get the raffle done. And this has been just an amazing presentation. And we encourage everybody, Diane, while you're getting that raffle going, uh, we encourage all of you to reach out to Brian and Amy and um, every like Olympic Construction Services. They're here and they're ready to help. So there are a lot of questions and they can answer them for you. So please reach out. Diane, yeah. we have a raffle winner for. Yes, thank you. Thank okay, you. I'm going to spin my little wheel here. This is always hilarious. <laughs> Up to my screen here. <laughs> I love this. The little Woodenville, really great wine. My wife is working there now to make the current vintage, and we both worked on the last vintage. So oh, exciting. Okay, Angela Garvin. Yay, Angela! Oh, Angela. she's ready to go. Hand is raised. All right. Ooh. Angela, we'll connect you with Brian to get that sorted out. And I am just going to thank you all again for being here. And we're going to transition, do a quick little transition here because Mila is going next.